guys, it's PM Mathis, your global indie author distributor, and I hope that you've had a great day. Now, I know you're probably wondering what am I putting on. It's Valor that I will talk to you about in just a few minutes. Absolutely love it because it's the that little confidence in the bottle. It prepares your mind and heart to get started, to jump right in. Okay, so I want to remind you first and foremost to subscribe, like, and share, right? And to be notified of my next video, you got to hit the notification bell, okay? So I'm going to jump right in and get started. This one I'm kind of calling, you know, Do It Afraid, Freedom, Independence, okay? All right, so I'm taking this one from Mark 10... 28 and it reads Peter began to say to him behold we have left everything to follow you now you understand that in that instance that he was talking to Jesus I mean that you have to lay you have to lay certain things down in order to get to that position that place in life that you that you see yourself going you have to lay down some um, some fears and some insecurities um, the need to have people rah, 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 cheer you on. Um, some of that won't be in place when you are setting out to create something that you've never seen. <laughs> Nobody around you has ever seen, but you know in your heart and mind that this is what you're called to. And so you're like, you know, come hell or hard water, I'm going to get this done. I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't even know what it's going to look like. But... I plan on making this thing happen. So, as you know, I have six points that I like to bring to you, okay? Because I just, it's just a round number and it, you know, we're starting out um, in a new frame of mind. We're starting out with some, you know, some other uncertainties, you know, that are coming along with um, jumping back um, into school and so I want to make sure that I can kind of give my little piece of um, encouragement and motivation to help you walk through um, some of the things that we can't foresee we didn't foresee and now we just have to deal with it, right so acknowledge your fear I know you probably heard me say that at some point in a different way, but the real big thing and key to getting beyond um, where you are and getting and keeping that stuck place in your head is to really acknowledge what is holding you back. Now, if you've heard my story long enough, you know that I can public speak like nobody's business, don't have a problem with time. But is in that one-on-one um, -on -one relationship with others that I find a struggle. And only because it comes from this um, leftover feeling of rejection and abandonment and not wanting to feel um, that necessary somebody not getting me or pulling away from me or <laughs> just thinking I'm weird because of this, that, or the other. But the funny part about it is that at the end of the day, in order to get to the place and the position that I need to get to and more than likely where you need to get to, those kind of feelings are going to have to die. They're, they're going to have to become small in order for you to come become big. And what I mean by big is in the place that you're called to, in, in, in the place that you're purpose, in the place that God has a plan for you in order to see that come to pass that those insecurities have to um, find themselves less and less and less I'm not saying that they'll go away but they can't dominate your thought process they can't be how you face the world and how you walk into the world just like I can't um, not even if I feel uncomfortable in that um, close connection in that one-on-one um, -on -one presentation and really trying to figure out who somebody is and what they need from me I have to I have to figure out what is the game plan to get me through that what is the what is the bigger goal 
and to be selfish and to have something that somebody else needs but be too afraid to speak to them about it that serves nobody any purpose and so rather than sitting in a position where I have information and knowledge to share uh, I'm just gonna put it out there and whoever it's for is for and I just have to you know feel content and good about being in a position of hey I did the thing I showed up I offered I spoke my truth and now we'll just see where it takes me okay and I want you to be able to do the same thing because when I talk about myself I want you to do, to relate these things to you if they apply you know I don't know what your life looks like or your everyday, but I can tell you how I'm walking through my everyday and how I'm getting over um, some of the things that held me back in the past. And I just hope and I pray that they bless your life and they give you a sense of, you know what, I'm not alone. If she can get it done, by God, I can get it done too. Okay, so point number three, two, excuse me, go through the what if statements. I know, you know, like way back when, um, before I got to this place and before I really had my relationship um, with God, I did a lot of the what if situations. And I'm not saying it's totally gone <laughs> because sometimes I can find myself, you know, well, what if I say this and, and what is their reply going to be? And what if they don't say um, what I think they should say? Am I going to have hurt feelings about that? So it's all the stuff that plays on in my head. So I still deal with it, but what I am finding is that I'm able to power through and ask the questions because if I never ask the question, I won't ever know the answer. I'll just assume that they're automatically going to say no or, if it, or this thing is not for them, okay? And so sometimes we put ourselves in the box and we limit ourselves and maybe it's just me. Maybe everybody else has figured this out. And if you have, you know, send your girl some love. Let me know that, you know what, it's doable. We can get over this thing and we can power through. Send your girl some encouragement because absolutely would love to hear that. And absolutely would know, love to know how you did it. Because that is what um, community, that's what family, that's what friends, that's what um, loving on each other, that's what being... It means to be um, loving people with human kindness is to share your thought process, share how you got over things, share how you're walking through. And we all have a story to tell. Mine is, may not be like yours, but I still have a story to tell. I still have some encouragement to give. And there is power in our testimony. There is hope and there is help and there is healing um, in our testimony as we relate the word of God as we relate our experiences as we relate how what it means and looks like to be a single parent or a single dad or what does it look like to work multiple jobs to try to make ends meet and still and they don't still don't meet and what are you doing on the side to kind of facilitate your financial situation and how are you dealing with the uncertainty of the time you know those kinds of things we're all dealing with and we can all be a help and we can all be a benefit um, to each other. It doesn't mean that we've got it all figured out or that life ain't still happening. But we still got to live through the crisis. We still got to live through the uncertainty. We still got to get out here and work and take care of our families. We still got to, you know, send our kids back to school. We still have to, you know, find hope in a God when we quite don't understand what's going on. All of it plays a part. Okay, so point number three, prepare yourself for the mental shutdown. How not to, I mean. Because <laughs> shutting down is not the answer. Life is still going to go on whether you choose to deal with it or not, whether you deal with it successfully or painfully, it will still go on. So you've got to make a choice how you're not going to shut down, how you're going to allow your heart to stay open, how you're going to forgive and deal, live through the tragedies. How are you going to face the losses? Are you going to let those just totally devastate you to the point of those who do need you and love you find you unable to function? Listen, we've all had broken pieces and places and we've all been slammed 
um, with too much information and the knowledge of losing people way too early. And so we all, if we can find that um, space and that place in our heart to be loving and kind, you know, that goes a long way because you don't know what somebody's dealing with. You don't know what they need today unless you ask, unless they, they tell you. And sometimes it's all about discernment and just being kind, just being who you are on any given day. Being a listening ear. I mean, you know me. I don't like my time wasted, but... What I have found is being able to be a listening ear in a, in a shoulder, even in those times when I think, you know what, I don't have time to deal with this, it has meant the world to somebody. And so, or even in the fact of just listening and not really having an answer or a solution, but people need that because they need to be seen and they need to be heard, okay? One breath at a time. All you can take is one breath at a time. You can take one step at a time. You can make, yes, you can make multiple decisions at a time, but really everything is done one, one piece, one step, one answer, one thought at a time. Whether it's a, a thought that keeps running and running and running, it's still one thought. Whether it's, it's a laugh or a joke or... Um, being able to sit in a peace of mind and founding, finding a foundation in God, you know, that's one step, one thought process, one action, one motivation, one encouragement at a time. That's all you got because you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised even the next second. But right now, what I have, let me use. Let me, let me give thanks for it. Let me be gracious. Let me be kind. Let me be forgiving in this moment right here and how can that influence and infects and um affect somebody else just be mindful just be mindful of of how you view life how you're walking forward and how you um, take the time to stop and listen or not because sometimes you gotta have the ability to self-care and if if right now that is not the time if in this one moment i just have one breath and i'm just holding on to every little strand of hope that i can i don't have time for you right now you have the right to say that but i would always just say just be kind in your presentation be kind in your words be kind in the fact of um, how somebody um, might perceive that okay Point number five, how are you, how are others doing it? Sometimes you just got to look at how other people are preparing themselves. What, what action plan do they have in place? What instructions can they give? Um, what example has their life been? Now, everything they do or have said may not fall into line and, and, and make a place in your life. But sometimes seeing somebody else and having an example of what that looks like makes a major difference. And so find out how other people are doing it. Ask them to help you. Ask, tell them what the situation is. Can you step in? Can you answer um, this for me? Can you be um, a place of hope and a, a soft place to fall if I need you to? just ask and I'm saying that even though a lot of that kind of thing is hard for me but I'm finding um, kindness means allowing other people to be and sit in positions that you can't necessarily feel for yourself okay point number six understand failure is success as long as you trying to be out here doing something you might have to keep falling but fall forward where you can get back up right because nothing is promised, nothing is perfect. You know, we try and, and we do, and we just keep moving forward. But as long as we don't give up, we win. As long as you don't give up, you win. As long as you are able to figure out what it is that you need, what it is that um, somebody else can um, help you with, you are able to walk through this life um, a lot more successful than most. And so now this is my PSA. You know your girl loves essential um, oils. And like I was telling you, 
we're going to talk to you today about Valor. Now, this is the Valor Rodon. This is not the one that you'll get in the PSK. You'll get a 5 mil um, bottle of Valor. And we call it our little confidence in the bottle. It helps instill courage and confidence and self-esteem. It helps the body self-correct. It's also um, balancing and aligning. I know I use Valor too for a lot of my DIY pain projects because it's good um, for that. It absolutely smells divine. You can actually wear it as a perfume and you will absolutely love it because I am taking it in and it is making um, what I'm doing um, a lot more pleasurable, a lot more easy, a lot more um, giving me the ability to flow and to be calm and to um, present the word in a clear concise way and I hope that I've done that now you know the PSK is 165 it comes with 12 oils and a diffuser so if you're interested in that definitely you know when this video drops you know send me a comment send me a message but you can find me also on uh, Google Google your girl follow me on social media I am on Facebook Instagram YouTube where this video would drop I have a podcast called um, your voice matters I have five ebooks and three um, um, paperback books so your girl is out there just put in PM Mathis in the search bar put in pew partners put in um, Pamela Mathis it doesn't matter you'll find me okay guys so hey this is PM Mathis your global indie author distributor and as always 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 I want you to what be blessed okay guys I'll talk to you later bye